Did you know that you can make dip in less than five minutes and save tons of money and make something that is identical to Copenhagen Lanka? And I'm talking identical. If you're interested, please stay tuned. Good morning, everybody. My name is Matt with Snooze at Home, and today is a video I'm very excited to make. Originally, this was going to be a much, much longer video that would go over two ways of making American dipping tobacco slash moist snuff slash chew or chaw or whatever you want to call it. We're going to call it moist snuff or dip during this video. Dip uh, just seems to be the more popular term. If you are confused about what I'm referring to, it's specifically the chopped, um, treated, dark fire tobacco that is sold under brand names like Copenhagen or Grizzly or Kodiak or things like that. I'm not talking about Swedish snus today. We're not talking about um, English and continental nasal snuffs. Today is all about dip. Originally, like I said, this is going to be a much, much longer video focusing on two methods. One, a much longer method that I had covered in the past in a very early video for making dip. And I still think that is a good recipe. But as I was experimenting, trying to figure out how to make it quicker with, um, with some different ingredients, some different techniques, trying to save people some time if they didn't necessarily have a, a lot of time to make dip in a pressure cooker or didn't have the equipment necessary, I found out that there is a shorter method for making dip that number one makes dip that is identical to manufactured products. And I'm not talking about man, like identical, like, oh, it's kind of like it. So, and it's cheaper. So you could try it. No, this stuff is like spot on flavor, texture, taste, sheen, color. Everything is the same as something like Copenhagen long cut. And then number two, it's just so much quicker and doesn't need so many exotic in ingredients and uh, equipment and stuff like that. So we're just going to go over the short method. If you want to check out the long method, you can check out a video that I made quite a long time ago. I'm going to put the link in the description. Although if you want something that is true to dip, this is your guide. If you have watched some other videos on the subject online too, you're probably familiar with uh, all those guys who tell you to like, buy chew and then like add espresso coffee to it that i'm here to tell you is bullshit that will not make dip that will just ruin good tobacco this is the guide for you now to kind of prove how easy it is and some of you who have been watching for a long time may have already noticed we're not at the kitchen table today we are just in my regular review space and this is just about like a foot of space that we have here this recipe is super easy super quick Let's go over the tools, let's go over the method, and we'll make some dip. It should be a super short video, but I promise the result is worth it. To make dipping tobacco, the first thing that we're gonna need is dark fired whole leaf tobacco. It specifically has to be dark fired whole leaf tobacco. I do not want you posting in the comments asking if you can make it with cigarette tobacco, roll your own tobacco, pipe tobacco. There is a reason for it. All American dip, save for a very select few and i'm talking the only one that comes to mind is something like copenhagen smooth wintergreen which still has dark fire tobacco but there's an extra condimental component in air cured virginia besides that one every single american dipping tobacco is made of dark fired tobacco it is smoky it has uh, certain qualities that lend itself very very well to be made into dipping tobacco it is very widely available in america which was why it was made into dipping tobacco in the first place and it has a legacy as a condimental tobacco for use in nasal snuff before then and snus which was the kind of precursor product to american dip it has to be whole leaf dark fired tobacco Luckily, you can buy two pounds of it for like 20 bucks on a couple of different websites online if you're in the States or Canada. Super easy to get your hands on. There is a little bit of processing involved. You do have to separate the stem from the lamina or the leathery part of the leaf. But once you have that done, you're good to go. And that's probably the most expensive part of the recipe, which is really, really nice. The other things we're going to need are water, of course. We are also going to need table salt. You should have both of these in your home. I really hope so. The third ingredient we're going to need is whiskey. Scotch whiskey, if you have it. I am using Costco brand Scotch whiskey. Number one, because I like it. It's really, really cheap and very good. And number two, I want to prove to you that this recipe doesn't necessarily need the best whiskey or even something like a super duper smoky whiskey. 
If you're into Isla whiskeys and very peaty scotches and things like that, that's totally fine and that's cool. But what we're really looking for here is um, a type of ethanol that we can add to. Well, the utter focus is crazy. We're looking for a type of ethanol that we can add to the dip in very small amounts that won't harm the flavor and will work in harmony with it. And the grainy, slightly smoky, sweet notes inside whiskey do pair very well with dark fired tobacco. We're also looking for something to dilute a couple of the ingredients in. This is what we're going to dissolve our salt into and the next ingredient, which is sodium carbonate. I'll teach you how to make sodium carbonate too. Uh, it's also called washing soda if you don't have any on hand and aren't interested in making it from baking soda. But yeah, we'll need a little bit of this. I was, this is kind of the secret, I think, to making dipping tobacco. If you go searching around online, you can find a report of the ingredients that the United States Smokeless Tobacco Company made to the US government, outlining all the different ingredients that went into their dips. And a lot of them are very similar to the stuff that you would find in snus or nasal snuff, which is the bread and butter of this channel. You got tobacco, you got salt, you got some kind of alkalizer, in this case, sodium carbonate. For the flavored dips, of course, you have flavorants and you have some, you know, sweeteners like licorice or saccharin. And then you have ethyl alcohol. And for a long time, I thought that the ethyl alcohol was added as some kind of disinfectant or preservative or some kind of that it was just there because of the consequence of the fermentation process. But no, it is added to make a dip taste like dip. Get your hands on some cheapo scotch, no peanut butter stuff or anything like that, and you'll be set. If you're watching this video, you're probably falling in one of two camps. On the one side, you have pre-existing viewers who are curious about dipping tobacco. Maybe you're European. Maybe you haven't had it before. Maybe you do use dip currently and are just looking for a way to save some money, which is good. That means you'll have watched my videos before and will already know about the deridding process. On the other hand, maybe you're watching this for the first time and you're new to the channel, you're new to DIY smokeless tobacco, and it's your first time watching somebody explain deribbing tobacco. I'm going to go ahead and give you a super brief tutorial on how it's done. There's nothing complicated going on here. When you receive whole leaf tobacco in the mail, it will always be packaged more or less like this. This is just a big old bag filled with tobacco leaves, which are much, much larger than you would expect they are if it's your first time looking at them. They're about the length of a human arm here. The smell on this is also really, really nice, I gotta say. So, once you get your tobacco out, we'll go ahead and remove a couple of leaves. The recipe that we're using and the one in the description is based off of 100 grams of tobacco. With dark fired, I find that that's typically seven or eight leaves, maybe a little bit more. Now, whole leaf tobacco is very, very cheap, so don't feel like you're wasting leaves if you have to pull out a couple more and process some. And if you do want to just de-rib the entire batch while you have it out, you absolutely can. The ribs should be saved because they can be used to make snuff. And the lamina keeps very, very well, even if you kind of treat it like garbage, just pop it in a Ziploc bag and put it in an airtight container and it'll stay nice and insect free, hopefully. I had some tobacco get ruined by weevils before, but that was completely my fault. Didn't store them in a sealed bag, just kind of left it open. This is an individual leaf of tobacco. What you want to do is expand it as long as you can. It's gonna be a little bit moist. If you wanna wear a glove for this process, it's absolutely fine. Dark cured will stain your fingers if you touch too much of it at one time. You're gonna to wanna to go find the bottom of the leaf. That's gonna be this thinner portion here with a thicker and more robust midrib. And opposite that is what we wanna tackle first. So you'll find with most leaves, you'll have this little knob of tobacco at the top and at that top couple of inches, it's about two or three inches from the very peak of the leaf. You could just go ahead and tear that off just like that. That's good lamina. The tip of the leaf has a lot of nicotine when compared to the rest of it. And the midrib in that is so thin that it's really just going to chop up just fine with the rest of it. And then with the rest of it, all you want to do 
is peel away from the midrib. If you watch some videos online, especially in the cigar making community or first person shots of people who have been in the industry for years rolling cigars or deribbing tobacco, they'll twist the midrib around their finger and just kind of do this maneuver and derib it all in one go. I'm not that type of person. Those guys do it all day, every single day, for years on end. I don't have that kind of skill developed, but even if you don't know what you're doing, you can still end up with a clean leaf with very little effort. Just takes you a little bit longer. Don't be afraid of it. I'm gonna go ahead and de-rib all the leaf I think I'll need. I'm gonna save those mid-ribs that are over there for a future project. I'll be right back once this is done to show you how to prepare washing soda or sodium carbonate or show you what it is. Once we have all of our tobacco nicely de-ribbed, we'll have to pull up the blender because this is the easiest way to chop tobacco up for any reason. You can, of course, sit there and bundle all your leaves up and chop them up with a knife to make very, very nice long strips. You can use a tobacco shredder, a tabletop one or an electric one to shred the tobacco up into very fine ribbons. But I want to make this tutorial for people who don't have either of those and do want to still make dip. To make sure that you get the right kind of chop in your tobacco leaf, do not set this up too high. You're, if you have a variable blender like this one, and it goes from 1 to 10, I find that the 3 setting chops it up pretty well. If you have a normal blender, or one that you can't control the speed in, make sure that you pulse very, very carefully. We want this stuff to get to the consistency of regular dip right out of the gate. Now, if you are a longtime viewer, you will notice that we are not drying the tobacco in the oven or the dehydrator before we chop it up, and there's a very good reason. Number one, the moisture in the leaf preserves the shape of the leaf as we cut it up and stops it from becoming flour or paste. And then number two is that when you're finishing the recipe, you actually don't need to add any uh, water to it or an excessive amount of water. There's still a little bit of water used to add the salts to, but we are only going to add as much water as we need and we should end up with a pretty complete dip right out of the gate. The recipe will still be very consistent. The only variable is the amount of water depending on the moisture in your leaf, the amount of whiskey, the amount of salt, and the amount of tobacco never really changes. I am sure that there is a way to get super scientific with this, but I've tried this out a couple of times now and it's worked every single time even if the leaves are slightly drier or slightly moister than the other. The best way to load your tobacco into the blender is just to stick the whole darn thing in there. Be mindful of your fingers. Whoops, drop the leaf. Don't be afraid of overcrowding at this point. You are going to need to stop your blender if you get any leaves caught, and leaves will always get caught in the top section of your blender or under the blades. Right now, we're just trying to get everything inside. If everything turned out okay, you'll end up with a chopped tobacco product that looks just like this. Now you can't dip this all by itself, but it should look pretty similar to a fat cut dip just left out in the truck to dry. I want you to get a good look at this on the autofocus here. Come on, there we go. You can let this go for longer if you want a finer cut or a snuff cut. Just don't let it go on too long and do not run your blender high. You will turn the stuff into flour. And the only thing that'll be good for is making nasal snuff, which is still good stuff. And if you want to see videos on that, I do have them on the channel, but that's not what we're doing today. If you don't have any sodium carbonate or washing soda of confirmable purity on hand, it is really easy to make this sometimes difficult to acquire ingredient. This is the most commonly used alkalizer in any kind of tobacco product. If you're new to DIY smokeless tobacco, alkalizers are typically added to stuff like uh, dip or nasal snuff or snus in order to make the nicotine within the leaf more bioavailable. That's why you use much, much smaller pinches of dip than you would something like cowboy chewing tobacco, where you just stick the whole leaf up in a big old golf ball sized wad in your cheek. Super easy to make. All you'll need is an oven, some baking soda, and a oven safe tray. 
Once your oven is preheated to 400 degrees, we'll go ahead and lay our baking soda out on that tray. Don't worry if it's not even or super clumpy. Just try and get it as flat as you can. There we go. Once you're ready, stick this in the oven for 30 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you will have pure sodium carbonate. Store this stuff in an airtight container like a Ziploc bag or a mason jar, and this will keep for a very, very long time. All right, everybody, let's get to making some dip. That's all the prep work we need. We'll need a kitchen scale. You don't have to get a milligram scale for this recipe, and I know that mine is pretty dirty, but uh, don't pay too much mind to that. All we need it to do is its job. We'll need a mixing bowl. We'll go ahead and put that in the center here. And of course, I will have the units on screen so that you can follow along at home as we mix. The recipe, as mentioned before, is based on 100 grams of tobacco flake. So we'll start by measuring that out. Perfect. In another container, we'll need 20 grams of whiskey. To your whiskey, you're going to add 10 grams of sodium carbonate. On top of that sodium carbonate, we are going to add 10 grams of regular table salt. And once that's done, go ahead and start stirring everything into solution. It's not going to dissolve perfectly, and if you feel like you have to add a little bit of water to this, that's perfectly okay. But I do recommend you kind of give it a little while before you start doing that because the sodium carbonate and the salt do take a little while to start dissolving. Ethanol also has slightly different properties when it comes to water, when it comes to solubility of certain substances. So be patient and you'll get where you need to go pretty soon. Once you've got this kind of clear, murky solution, we're going to add no more than 20 grams of tap water at least for now if we need to do any more moistening we'll add that to the dip itself as we mix but for right now don't go over the same amount of whiskey that you added in tap water i'm also going to recommend that while you're adding your water you use a very light hand and add it in with a spoon water is much heavier than we might imagine at first glance especially at these smaller scales once you have your water added in Continue stirring everything into solution until it gets a lot more clear. When you're happy with how your solution looks, and like I said, it's not going to get perfectly clear, there is still going to be a little bit of particulate at the bottom. Make sure that you whip that up inside the vessel that you're adding it from before you add it. But when you're ready, just drizzle it on. and use your spoon to get the rest of that stuff out there. Now we mix. If you feel like there's not enough moisture in the solution we just made, do not worry, continue stirring. We want all of the flakes to get a little bit of contact with that solution before we start adding water, because once we start adding water, that's it. You can't really dry it out that easily. It's always better to take a little bit more time on the earlier steps before you do something that you can't redo. Once you feel like your mix is incorporated into the tobacco and you'll know it because it'll start taking on a certain sheen and the color will have changed slightly. It'll also become a lot more plush rather than being just leaf flakes in a bowl. We can start adding water 10 grams at a time and then mix it in. Do not over moisten, you will end up with an unusable dip soup. I know that my tobacco took 10 grams when I did a test batch of 40 grams of tobacco, so I'm gonna start with 20 grams, but for your first time doing this, no more than 10 grams, mix it all in, and then stop, check the dip with your finger, 
and continue if you feel like you might need more. If you feel like it is just a little bit drier than optimal, stop anyways because this stuff will continue to get softer as you let it sit around for a couple of days when you make your way through it. It's also a pretty good opportunity to rinse out the vessel that you mixed all the carbonates into. we keep stirring. And voila! I know that we have some lighter spots here that's just a little bit of mid-rib. Let's get that out of the way. This is dip in smell. <sighs> Smells like Copenhagen. In taste, it tastes like Copenhagen. I'm gonna take a little pinch right now. In burn, it burns like Copenhagen. It's got that same kind of sour kind of thing going on. The spit develops exactly like a regular piece of dip. I don't know why this works. I think I, I have a... I think I have an idea as to why this works. I don't think that most commercial dip is actually fermented for as long as the manufacturers say that it is. I think uh, the tobacco itself is processed for a very, very long time, but most manufacturers actually just like stick all the ingredients together and put it into a can without paying much mind to any kind of post-processing beyond the addition of the salts and the alkalizers and the flavors. Copenhagen stands out as one that claims to be barrel aged for three years, but I think that that may actually be referring to the leaves themselves in storage rather than the finished dipping tobacco. I could be completely mistaken. There are dipping tobacco products like Neftobak in Iceland that are aged in barrels in their semi-finished state for a couple of months. But I think that because this is, because this makes dip, this process, then we're being misled by manufacturers because this I mean that's that's a dip spit folks transparent a little bit yellow like rinsing out a coffee cup and that's really it I was like I said at the beginning if you have your doubts so did I at the at the start of this experiment to think that this would be so simple and that it would work like this but this is really this is your dip now, this stuff will store indefinitely in the freezer. This stuff will also keep pretty well if you just keep it in a can in your pocket. Um, and that's really it. I want to say thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. If you would like to become a patron, say if this helped you and you wanna shoot me a couple of dollars to help me continue making videos, I'd be more than happy to take your money. If you want to buy an accessory online, I sell a couple of tap boxes for nasal snuff, a couple of snooze accessories as well. Nothing really for dip, but if you are into those other things, feel more than welcome to browse around. I will be doing more dip content in the future. This stuff is going straight into my freezer to kind of do its thing. A word of caution before you go. Because of the way that the alkalizer works with the tobacco, this stuff is going to be a little bit stronger than a normal can of dip when you first take it out. That's okay. It will mellow out it over time. If you want to speed up that mellowing out process, let it sit in a Tupperware container with the lid slightly ajar in your fridge for about three days and then do long-term storage in the freezer. Because I'll tell you what, this is pretty close to Kodiak in terms of that nicotine strength that punch that burn this is good stuff guys thank you so much for joining me really happy that i have now completed the diy smokeless tobacco trifecta in my modern style don't watch that old video anymore that one is out of mode this is the recipe that you should be making uh, bye bye